In this video, we'll talk about gonadotropin hormone releasing hormone or GNRH. So GNRH is a peptide type hormone synthesized and released from the GNRH neurons within the hypothalamus. So it's a hypothalamic hormone which is a decapeptide and it is synthesized from a GNRH prohormone and this prohormone is actually synthesized by the GNRH1 gene located in the chromosome 8. We have to remember that GNRH is a key regulator of the reproductive axis and it's play a key role in regulating the gonadotropins. So let us delve into details. But before that, hit that subscribe button. Here we are looking at the hypothalamus and pituitary. In the hypothalamus, there are GnRH neurons which secretes GnRH in the synaptic terminal. And that gets released into the portal system and reach the pituitary. In the pituitary, there are different kinds of cell. One type is the, the, the gonadotroph cells which secretes the gonadotrophins. So on the surface of the gonadotroph cells, there are specific receptors for GnRH. So it's known as GnRH receptor. So this signaling leads to G protein activation and cyclic AMP generation. Then the cyclic AMPs, uh, uh, cyclic AMP activates protein kinase A whose catalytic domain reaches the nucleus and lead to gene transcription. And it leads to production of enzymes and molecules required for LH and FSH biosynthesis. So these are the two important uh, gonadotropines. Now here again we are at hypothalamus and pituitary. We looked at that GnRH neuron secretes basically GnRH hormone. And basically there are bursts of gonadotropin releasing hormone uh, release happens during the puberty. And what happens is GnRH triggers the pituitary to secrete either FSH or LH or in case of males it would help to secrete ICSH. So FSH and LH would work on female reproductive system whereas ICSH would work on male reproductive system, system for example testis. So overall GnRH modulates the hypothalamus, pituitary and gonad hormonal axis. This is basically our reproductive axis. Now in many syndromes and many medical conditions like Kalman syndrome, this hormonal axis is defective and that leads to delayed or absent puberty. We would also touch upon that. Now let us talk about the important aspect of GnRH release. GnRH is not released in a sustained fashion from these GnRH neurons. It turns out that GnRH is released in a pulsatile fashion. And this pulsatile release of GnRH is important for further release of FSH and LH. So if this pulsatile release is blocked and somehow it is made to secrete a sustained high level of GnRH, it turns out that FSH and LH release is also blocked. So the pattern of GnRH secre secretion is really important for the gonadotropin uh, hormone to be released into the blood. So overall we have to understand GnRH is pulsatile that would lead to normal FSH and LH secretion. If GnRH secretion is continuous, no FSH and LH secretion would happen. And these kind of experimental results help doctors to devise strategy to treat many disease. And let me exemplify them. So GnRH analogs are used to treat many diseases. For example, there are pulsatile dose that can be helped to uh, basically um, regain the delayed puberty because we know whenever there is gonadotrophin releasing hormone there would be FSH and LH secretion that can help in this transition in the puberty. Also many cases there are an ovulatory infertility where the ovulation doesn't happen and it doesn't happen because there is not enough LH in the system. So giving gonadotropic uh, giving GnRH analog can improvise the LH secretion. Also, the continuous dose can be inhibitory and this can be used to basically uh, treat precocious puberty where the transition to puberty happens very early. 
so it can be blocked by a sustained dose of GnRH analogs. Then could there could be problems like endometriosis, breast cancer, and prostate cancer. So in case of breast cancer, estrogen is the key problem, right? And estrogen is secreted when LSA, LH and FSH stimulates the ovarian follicle. So if we block the GnRH itself, uh, if we block the secretion of uh, LH and FSH by the GnRH analogs, then estrogen levels would also be down and th that can be used as a treatment regime. In case of prostate cancer also, if the testosterone is too much, it will lead to a problem. So obviously, it can be blocked by blocking the gonadotropin hormones uh, as a treatment regime. Now we would look at Kalman syndrome, which is a defect in the hypothalamus. So Kalman syndrome is a rare genetic disorder that affects the development of hypothalamus and it leads to anosmia, that means absence of smell and delayed puberty. So punchline, Kalman syndrome combines an impaired sense of smell and the hormonal disorder lead to uh, prevent, uh, hormonal disorder lead to uh, delayed puberty or absent in puberty. And it all starts in the embryonic brain so in the embryonic brain, there are specific regions which are which would give rise to basically um, the olfactory receptor neurons, ORNs. Um, these ORNs help us to understand the smell. And there are GnRH neuron which has to migrate all towards the hypothalamus to be situated there and control these hypothalamic uh, pituitary gonad axis. Now, in this Kalman syndrome, this migration of GnRH neuron is improper. So they are not uh, properly localized to the hypothalamus. And that's why this entire HPG axis is kind of faulty. So in this normal scenario, we can see how GnRH neurons are located properly and secreting GnRH. But in Kalman syndrome, the GnRH neurons are less in number because many of these neurons did not reach the hypothalamus in proper time of brain development. And that is why FSH and LH levels or ICSH levels in males are always low. This cannot trigger or transit the puberty properly and that lead to delayed or completely absent puberty. So overall, we can understand in, in during puberty, there are several uh, primary and secondary sexual characteristic uh, related changes. For example, um, uh, the females would start menstrual cycle, breast enlargement would happen, there would be pubic hair and fat deposition in thighs, buttocks and breast. All and, and in males, there would be enlargement of the penis, uh, hairs in the chest, groin area, etc. So all these transitions are actually delayed when we have Kalman syndrome. Now, just to recap, basically there are primary sexual characteristics which are abrogated in males and females. For example, males would have small penis, improper testicular descent, low sperm count. And in females, there is amenorrhea or irregular menstru menstruation. In the sexual, sexual, uh, secondary sexual characteristics which are affected involves lack of facial hair in case of males, low muscle tone, no deep voices. In case of females, there could be poor uh, breast development, lack of pubic hair, etc. But what is basically the treatment? Uh, what is the cause of Kalman syndrome? So which genes are involved? So it turns out the in next generation sequencing identified many gene mutations which are associated with the Kalman syndrome. But exactly which gene leads to these problem is still unanswered. But many of these genes which are mutated control uh, activity. So let's talk about what is the treatment of Kalman syndrome. So specific regime, uh, regimen of hormonal therapy can improvise. For example, testosterone injection, estrogen, progesterone pills, GnRH injections or HCG injections can improvise or restore this hormonal axis and allow the transition to puberty. So I hope the overall video was useful. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Uh, please uh, support our channel with super thanks. See you in the next video.